Russell Westbrook, welcome to the Daily Social Distancing Show. Thank you, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Oh, man, I appreciate it, man. You, you are uh, easily one of the most electric NBA players of all time. You're on a new team now, and you're living in a new city. I would love to know two things. One, what is it like moving to a new city during COVID? And two, do you ever get used to living in new places? Well, you know, the first thing is moving during COVID has been crazy. Um, unfortunately, you know, I will probably say my wife probably has to take more of the responsibility of getting the kids and getting everything acclimated, finding new places to stay, uh, making sure obviously we're traveling safely and making sure we're doing all the right things. And right. It, can be a little, it can be a little crazy because the kids don't make it easy, sleep schedule and getting everything <laughs> acclimated. That, that is the main, that's my main concern is making sure the kids and the family are, are doing great. And that's the most difficult part. I can kind of manage and figure it out, but right, right, the, right. Kids, the kids is the most important part. And for you, do you ever get used to just living in a new city? You know what? I, it's crazy because the last three, two years for me, has been very different in the past. I was in Oklahoma for 11 years, um, right. 11 years. And then I went to Houston for a year and then COVID hit and I went back to LA and then got traded to DC. And um, it's been very different for me um, in the past and different for kind of everybody around me because everybody that knows right. me knows I'm very a routine type of person and kind of wants to be in the same place all the time. And uh, it's been, been difficult for me. Uh, times but i'm happy that i got my family here it makes it easy for me to transition easy and the team and the organization has been amazing and the people has been great so dc oh, that's, dope. that's dope that's dope let's talk a little bit about that routine the routine before you play a game is one yeah. of the most interesting parts of of your life for me and that is what russell westbrook is gonna wear before a game you are literally a walking fashion ramp or it's like paris fashion week all the time who is dressing you and how do you stay ahead of the trends the way you do? Because like, it's never like boring. It's never like, man, wow, Russell Westbrook. It's like, no, no, no. He's always ahead of the curve. Well, you know, I'm dressing myself number one, Trevor. I think that's the, uh, to me, that's the most unique thing about it is that I wake up and I just go for what I feel. Fashion is something that I, you know, personally love to do and embrace the, the ability to be able to be, um, express myself through clothes. I think that's the best right, part right, of right. fashion. I wake up, I can be like, oh, I want to be, uh, I want to wear yellow, or I want to wear pink, or I want to wear green, or I want to wear baggy clothes, or I want to wear a suit. That's the best part about it, and I just go with it. I think that's that's part of what makes Russell Westbrook such an interesting character, is that, like, you know, for so many athletes, we only know them in the sport. And so what, I, what I've always enjoyed about getting to know you as a person is, like, through the things that you do, whether it's the love of fashion, whether it's the love of your community. Like, you talked about Oklahoma, for instance. 11 years in Oklahoma, and what, what I appreciated was you loved Oklahoma, Oklahoma loved you. You know, you learned about the city, you ingratiated yourself to the people, and now you've taken that a step further, and you're gonna be creating a, 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 a film about the story of what happened in Tulsa, the burning of Tulsa. Talk me through a little bit about that and, and why you felt it was so important for you to get involved in telling that story. Yeah, man, it's, it, it's crazy because uh, being in Oklahoma, like you mentioned, for 11 years, um, so I was able to kind of connect with the people and obviously connect with the history uh, of the community. And to me, that's the most important part. And um, been able to travel to Tulsa kind of up and back through my years there. And um, I didn't know anything about the Tulsa Massacre, Black Wall Street um, until I got there. And then once right. I heard about it, um, I was in shock because I was surprised that nobody, and especially our, our African-American communities, our um, people that have black owned businesses don't understand mm -hmm. and didn't understand the impact that the massacre had on the, the world. and how it can, you know, change our future. Um, and instantly, um, you know, I was lucky enough to be able to connect with Stanley um, and be able to create, and obviously now with history, create this docu-series to be able to, not just to show everybody what happened, but educate ourselves to be able to now, in the future, find ways to be able to help impact our communities, especially uh, our Black-owned businesses and kind of uplift them. You've definitely done that with your own foundation. My favorite foundation name, the Why Not Foundation. I love it. Cause it's just about why not man let's do it. it feels like russell westbrook it's like why not why can't we do it why can't we be better why not do these things you you you've always believed in going into communities finding youth that have been left behind finding youth that don't have opportunities educating them and what you're doing now with the foundation is you're working really hard to get kids involved in tech and computer literacy which is a slightly new direction for you yeah i think the biggest part uh, especially with the foundation we kind of started in 2012 and i wanted to starting education and making sure our youth was educated and having books mm -hmm. and resources. Um, and as I've gotten older and 
been able to kind of see uh, what's important the way that our world and our society is kind of moving. Um, I want to find ways to be able to, uh, you know, enhance the foundation to find different different avenues. And moving forward now, we've been, like you mentioned, working in tech and uh, working in workforce development, working on the mental health and mental wellness side as well. You know, foundation is, to me, it's very, very important because a lot of people can, you know, you can write a check, you can do anything and just go about yeah. your business. But if you're a kid from the inner city um, you, and you don't actually feel that impact or that inspiration, um, it doesn't really change your life. And uh, I know that personally because I, I lived it. Um, and to me, I want to make sure that I can be the voice, I can be the person that those kids, uh, our youth can look to and say, you know, he came back to our community, he helped us, he gave us access, he gave us the ability to be able to change our, our lives and change the world we live in, so. One of the saddest stories of professional sports, and sometimes even the entertainment industry, so many black people or even people from just, you know, poorer communities get a lot of money in a little bit of time. And then few years after their career ends, it's all gone and they're broke. And then the cycle continues and you're like, man, what happened? There was an opportunity there that is lost. Now that happens on a, on a, on a smaller level as well, just every day in communities as you know, managing money, learning how to create money, learning how to grow money is something that not everybody is taught. You're passionate about that. And you're, you're, you're teaming up with Varo right now to work on that. Just walk me through what you're gonna be doing and, and, and why this was what you wanted to get into. Yeah, man, you know, honestly, I'm so grateful for Varo because we've, as a team internally, been trying to figure out, you know, the right partners to be able to get and understand financial literacy, understand the, the financial gap in our society, understanding the uh, systemic financial inequality that we, we face, you know, today, and, and, and especially in, in the finance world. And Varo's man is an unbelievable partner um, being the, the first all digital bank with a national charter, which is important because it allows them to be able to help everybody, not just one particular area and our right. people, but it allows them to be able to help people about check checkings and give them about their savings and understand about credit card, but educate them on exactly what is happening. Because as we know, and as you mentioned, our underserved communities and our communities of color uh, have struggled with that. Uh, over over many many years and that have plagued us and to me i want to make sure that i can be the person to step into that space um, and partner with an unbelievable partner like varo that has the same mission in mind is to help our underserved and and help our unbanked communities and to me i think it's a, a unbelievable opportunity and um, i'm very very excited about it so you know it's it, it's funny um I, I was chatting to a friend of mine about all the things that you do. You know, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, Russell Westbrook's gonna be on the few show. And he's like, oh, what are you coming on for, boss? I was like, no, he does all these things. And my friend said the funniest thing ever. He was like, wow. He's like, I thought Russell Westbrook was an asshole. He's a, he's a Man. really dope guy. Oh my and, goodness. And I was just like, do you ever, do you ever have that where people see you on the court and you've got that game face and they're like, man, you don't want to talk to Russell Westbrook, but you're like a soft guy who loves helping people. Do you ever get that? Trevor, it's crazy you mentioned, I get that. Um... Every day. That's a, honestly that's the biggest challenge of my life. And, <laughs> you know, it's it's it's, it's crazy. It's, it's honestly the biggest challenge of my life because I play the game with so much passion and aggression and want to do great. I, I want to be the best at the game, but at the same time, I want to be the best off the floor and helping as right, many people right, as right. possible and being impactful. I don't want to just talk about it and say, "Oh, doing this, doing that," but I want to be the one to change. Uh, our world in many directions that we've talked right. about in finances and education, mental health, workforce development. I want to put my hands in everything. There's nothing that I feel like I can't do. Um, and that's the, where obviously the why not mentality comes from. But every day it's a challenge, man, for me to be able to <laughs> change that, change the narrative. Of like, listen, hey guys, I'm a human being. I'm normal. I want to help. I want to do the right thing. And, you know, to me, my, my main job, Trevor, honestly, just to make sure that I stay humble and understanding that I've been gifted with this platform uh, to be able to give back to as many people as possible. Um, and I'm gonna find ways to be able to do that with every avenue that I can, as long as um, God has blessed me with this opportunity, I'm gonna make sure that I continue to help and impact as many people as possible. That's why my friend, you are an MVP both on and off the court. I appreciate you taking the time. Russell Westbrook, take care of yourself, my friend. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you.